What's up guys, it's Lance here from iJack86. We are out in the garage working on a project uh, for the AR-15. You guys who follow us on our Facebook page have seen this rifle before. Uh, this is a rifle that we painted a while back and we just wanted to show it to you guys. A lot of good response on this rifle and the actual paint job. We like how it turned out and it works pretty well for um, our area. So we are going to paint another rifle today, uh, Jordan's DCM. So we're going to kind of take you guys through the steps of what we did uh, on this rifle to get what we're going to do. We're going to use a little bit different colors, a little bit different um, stencils, but we kind of just wanted to show you guys what we're doing here. So uh, let's kind of kick this off and we'll show you guys how we're doing this. So we have everything masked off that we want to mask off. Anything that is not getting painted on the rifle is off. As you can see, it's pretty bare bones. Um, the only thing we're really masking off is the trigger. Uh, we're just not going to paint that. Uh, we're going to mask off the magwell as soon as we're uh, ready to paint. Uh, but we're going to get to degreasing this guy. And you're using what? Brake clean? Yep, just brake okay. clean. I just want to power wash it. And then after we're done brake cleaning her, we'll uh, wipe it down real nice to get in all those nooks and crannies. And She'll be ready to go after she's dry. So while that rifle is drying and we're gonna finish cleaning it off, we are prepping the accessories that are going on here. So these have been degreased. They're ready to be painted. If you want to paint them on your rifle and leave them the way they are, that's perfectly fine. That's up to you. We decided to take these off and we're going to paint these as is. Just make sure that you're masking off important parts like the lens uh, whenever you're ready. And uh, make sure you wipe it down again if you do touch them. We are doing a light base coat of, what is that? The OD green. Yeah. It's uh, Rust-Oleum. We're using all Rust-Oleum here. It's not sponsored. For our first coat, it's got to be the lightest. It gives us something to stick to. So the first coat of base OD Green is done and dry. And we are going to lay this down, put our stencils over it, and get to painting. So let's get on to step number two. Step two, coat two. We're dry, but we're going to do our stenciling when this thing is laid flat because it's easier to do it that way. So uh, your base coat is OD green. Your next coat is earth wow. brown, right? It's like an earth brown from Rust-Oleum. Where's the cap at? Up there. Um, it's like a dark brown. It's a dark brown that we used on the previous rifle we showed you guys earlier. Uh, and I, I use different stencils. I use grass, sticks, and pine. Uh, and I kind of laid them down and went over them with my dark brown. Jordan is using this grass. Where'd you get this from? Walmart. It's from Walmart. So uh, you could obviously go out and pick this out from, you know, a field if you have it or whatever, but we just picked some up at Walmart. We're gonna use this as a stencil uh, on this rifle. And we're using three colors on this rifle, whereas the other one we used two colors, just the two browns. So uh, we're gonna see how this turns out. And yeah, obviously the the more you press down and the closer you hold, the more defined your lines are gonna be. You wanna get your pistol grip a little better. It's so funny. At this point, yeah, it looks like a tiger stripe, doesn't it? So one thing to consider uh, when you're painting this, if you're real concerned about looks more so than camouflage, you might want to consider either paint matching your magazines or either matching the paint to your magazines. Um, as you can see in the other rifle, the flat dark earth brown matched pretty well with the brown we were using. And I'm not sure if you guys can tell with the light, but the OD green, um, on this Rust-Oleum matches almost perfectly to the um, OD green on the P-Mags. So 
Uh, even though our primary color is mostly gonna be brown, you'll still be able to tell that there's a hint of green, which is gonna match the PMAGs that we're actually using with this rifle. Now, a lot of people worry about painting the barrel or painting under the barrel for a couple reasons. One, they're worried about heat transfer. Um, most of the time, you're really never gonna run into any issues with getting this barrel so hot that you gotta worry about the paint underneath getting ruined. Uh, so that's really not a concern for us. However, a lot of people either don't wanna paint the barrel uh, so they'll kind of roll up a piece of paper and you can kind of slide it down the handguard. That way it'll protect the barrel from being painted. Or other people worry about getting even distribution of paint uh, underneath the handguard on the barrel when they are painting it. Uh, again, that's not really a concern for us because as you can tell just by looking, we did not take the handguard off when we're painting it and paint is getting under there perfectly fine. Uh, and for the most part, it's even. And it looks like we pretty much took the barrel off to paint it or the handguard off to paint it, but we didn't. So we are painting with the handguard on. Oh my god, looks good actually. I would. So we ended up going over with that grass and we wanted a little bit more texture so we broke it up with some sticks as well and we ended up going over with another coat of the OD green because uh, we weren't a fan of how light it was. Uh, you can kind of go back and forth with what you want. Uh, we put the black butt paint, pad on there and the T1 just to see how it breaks it up. But um, that's the good thing about a Krylon uh, or rattle can paint is it's, it's cheap and you can go over it uh, as many times as you want to get the desired effect and it comes off with acetone fairly easily so if you ever want to strip it down you can strip it down as well so we'll let this dry before we um show you guys the final product all right so here's the final product guys uh, i killed one of the lights here so hopefully you can kind of see the actual color a little bit better we ended up going over this with a od green at the end to darken it up uh, and it turned out pretty well we like what we have here depending on what you guys are using for paint kind of determines the wait time you want to wait before you're actually handling this. Now with most rattle can jobs like this, we're just using Rust-Oleum. It's not going to be a super, super, you know, great like paint job like something like Cerakote would be. So uh, just keep that in mind. You're going to get a little bit of wear. There's areas that they're going to wear. Uh, so that's, that's really just normal. The good thing about this is that rattle can jobs are cheap. Uh, you can do them more than once. If you don't like it, you can go over it and you can strip them down with acetone and redo it if you want to for a changing of the seasons or for whatever reason you guys want to do, you can just, you know, completely redo the entire rifle. So don't be afraid to give it a try. The only suggestion I would say is if you ever plan on selling your rifle, I would probably not advise that you paint it. Once you start painting rifles, you are severely limiting the number of people that would per uh, want to purchase that rifle just because of the paint scheme. So I would advise if you're going to sell it in the future, probably not paint it. Even Cerakote, I may even say don't do that because you'll find guys, even if even though Cerakote's a nice you know paint job, uh, there's people that aren't going to like the scheme, so they're not going to want to buy it. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's great for concealment. Uh, nothing stands out more than a black rifle in the middle of the woods. So that's really the reason we did this is for concealment. So thanks for watching guys. Check it out. Uh, be sure to check out our Facebook page. We're posting pictures all the time. Uh, and be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. All right, thanks for watching again.